Let's take a look at some of the more complex general motor patterns and daily life activity movements. Starting with the lunge, we move into unilateral lower body motions. Uh, not only is it unilateral, meaning one side's doing something different than the other, it's also uh, a lot less stable and it creates an overload just by using our body weight because we are using just one leg doing one thing at a time. Practically speaking, when you do this throughout your day, you're going to move lunging through the kneeling position usually or either side and you can do that assisted and the way that we move mechanically today will look a little bit different than how you would do it day to day. We start with the lunge and the split squat, a closed chain lunge. So the split squat is going to line up in a big deep staggered stance, dropping that right leg, go ahead and face the wall. We're going to show you an assisted split squat to start. <clears throat> so grab a hold of the band there for stabilization. You can grab as many or as few as you want. Grabbing more uh, bands or grabbing more strap assistance obviously takes the weight off the body. Drop your right leg to me in a big staggered stance, toes only. The split squat goes down and up dropping the back knee toward the ground without collapsing the chest. So let's begin with round one. We're going to start with 12 repetitions up and down, extending through that front leg and back leg, pushing through the front heel, smooth and steady down and smooth and steady up. We'll take 30 seconds to rest in between these exercises. We're going to do two rounds. Our second round on the, uh, we'll do two rounds. Obviously we're doing both sides. Our second round, we're going to show you without assistance, just the body weight loaded or an overload with dumbbells for the split squat. Try to perform, perform 12 repetitions. What number are we on now? 10. Smooth down and smooth up. And we'll rest after that one. Let's take a quick look at the angle from the, from the front. I'm going to demonstrate for him here. Mm -hmm. In that split squat, <clears throat> When we go down into our load, we need to make sure that our hip, knee, ankle, and toe alignment are all matching, meaning we don't want deviations of the knee to the inside or outside. We don't want too much forward flexion of the knee in that front. We want to be dipping into nice 90 degree angles from the side, the way you saw with Risa there. But we also want to have good up, uh, front alignment of that front leg and alignment of the back leg as well. Let's begin on side B. Drop the left leg back, make sure you have good alignment, standing posture, and we're going to begin up and down nice and smooth. Find your stability when you get before you get started, and we're up and down nice and easy. Not necessarily easy, especially when you put more load into it and more mindfulness into it to smooth and control that motion up and down. Rice is doing a great job of trying to stabilize through those hands, giving herself a little assistance here in our closed chain lunge, also known in the strength and conditioning world as the split squat. Twelve repetitions and then we'll rest again and then we're going to be moving into the body weight loaded squat here. So same split squat. This time we're going to load body weight, no stabilization with the hands, just the body reacting here. Go ahead and load. Let's load toward the camera here so they can see you from the front angle this time. It's the exact same position. She's going to have to work to keep her shoulder blades in posture and position. Start with the right leg back angle right toward the camera if you would. Mm -hmm. Now step that right leg back. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we're up and down for 12, smooth and steady. So here you'll really be able to see that hip knee ankle alignment. It's taken Risa quite a while to perfect this position, working with it uh, for years now. When you drop down, push that hip forward a little more. Driving through that front hip and pushing into the hip flexor is going to make your back knee work a little bit more. But it's also giving your quadricep hip flexor a lot more uh, length and mobility in this. Always focusing on the heel and the extension of that front thigh through the back side of that front thigh through the glute. Good job fighting that lean forward for every repetition, keeping your core engaged. Very good. Take a second, shake it loose. Even though we switch legs, we're not te technically taking a full break on uh, 
one side while the unilateral side is loaded, like if we were doing upper body exercises, the other side would be kind of resting while you do it. So give yourself a little bit of a break in between round one, or side A and side B, as well as in between round one and round two. Ready for round two, side B. This will be the last of the closed chain lunge, and then we'll uh, show you in a different video the open chain lunge, how that lunge can uh, disconnect from the ground and goes into an open chain movement. Up, yep, up and down for 12. Smooth and steady. From that back side, like you saw in round one, I'm seeing good straight line spine. We're not letting the shoulders round or the posture tilt forward. We're maintaining our suck and tuck and engagement through our core, especially as we lower down. We don't want to let that back arch. We're driving those four points of contact into the ground on the front leg, and obviously only two points of contact on the back leg. Really using our mindfulness and our stabilization to correct all those little reaction times to control our stability and strength through knee flexion and extension, hip flexion and extension. Very good job. Mm -hmm.